Hey guys, today we are talking about a pasteurizer and it can be used for other um, heat kneading processes with milk. You can do yogurt or cheese with it and what it does is it cycles cold water through to cool things down and it has a heater in it that heats things up. And for those of you who've tried to make cheese or yogurt before and felt like you had things burn or things that didn't stay up to temperature, this is a really great tool. These guys um, also made the cream separator that I use for my goat's milk and they also have a, a butter churn. You did a good job. We have our dairy on a very small scale and we use goats. And so we're gonna see if this is overkill for us, but for those of you who are wanting to have a dairy farm where you can sell products, having these kind of tools on hand will optimize your time and uh, make for a better product. So let's go ahead and unbox this. Never start pasteurizer before filling water into the pasteurizer so it actually heats and cools water. When you are making cheese or any other milk product that needs to be heated, it has to have a double boiler effect, which means that you have water in one pot that is heated and then you have the milk in another pot on top so that it's not direct heat on the milk itself because it will burn and it doesn't have even heat uh, travel through if you have heat just on the bottom. So the way that this works is that it's like a double boiler but you can set your, your temperature and then when you hit that temperature it stops increasing heat, it just holds the temperature there. So it, the, the nice thing about that is you don't have to sit there and babysit your milk. All right, the things you're supposed to have on hand are an inlet hose, an out, outlet hose, a thermometer. All right, this is your milk actual container. This is the inside container. And it looks like two, maybe three gallons is your max, but it's nice and big. It looks like it's stainless steel. This is your lid, inlet hose. This is your outlet hose. This is your thermometer. This little grommet right there. That is your thermometer holder right there right there that tells your pot how hot the water is getting it has a really nice tough thick cord instead of a little baby cord so the reason that you want it at the sink is that the water cycles and you can evacuate it out of the appliance easily if it's next to a sink Otherwise you're carrying water back and forth, it gets kind of messy. And also you have electricity that you're working with at the same time. So it's probably a little safer just to have it next to the sink and keep it simple. Blue starts and stops. Before starting the heating process, make sure there's secondary water in the pasteurizer and that settings are properly adjusted. So there is our max fill line. All right, from the instructions that I can read, it doesn't look like it actually tells you how to fill it or anything like that. They just assume you're smart enough to look at it and figure it out if this is the input, use it as an input. If this is an output, use it as the output. So I'm just going to pretend that I know what I'm doing and I'm going to hook it up. All right, so I'm assuming that this bulb at the bottom goes on your sink and that there's a hole up here somewhere on the lid around the lid somewhere so that you can put that little metal tube in. So I'm going to, I'm going to look for something that looks like it fits this. I found a hole that appears to be the right hole. Now, just so you know, this hose doesn't actually come in contact with your food. It's just for water. But I don't have any sputtering. I think if I were to not be holding this on, I don't think it would work. I think my faucet is the wrong size for that to necessarily fit on super easily without me holding it. But... 
it's definitely working problem is if you then take it off like that you're gonna have it um, siphoning out but I wanted to show you really quick what it looks like on the inside and there's your max line oh, is it gonna show it there it is right there can you see it the max line I just hit I just hit my fill line, so I'm going to drain that out, put it somewhere to dry. Our goats are still feeding babies, so we are getting milk from our local dairy. And one thing I would like to point out is that once the coronavirus quarantine is over, don't forget about your local farmers. So this one, I would assume, hooks to here. Alright, it is also telling me not to touch the metal body when the urn is in use because it will burn you and be careful taking the lid off. Don't take the lid off because it will burn you. It is steam. Anytime you have something that has been shipped, make sure to wash it before using it for food. Put it in. All right, so at this point it looks like if I want to have the water that high, that's what these little hooky things are on the side is to lock the milk container in so that it is sunk down in the water instead of just floating on the water. So that's interesting. All right, so there's that one. All right, see that little latch that I had to kind of turn and twist? had to turn and twist that to kind of get it to hook onto the metal bucket. If I had put my milk in already, that wouldn't have been so difficult because it would have weighted it down a little bit. It says, place the device on the firm plane and stable surface. It is recommended that the surface of cooling water and drain is not more than two meters away from the pasteurizer. So it's saying keep this next to the drain. Put the inlet hose in the hole, put outlet hose on the cooling connector. So, so I've got to open this up enough to get it over the wider part of the hose so that I can clamp it down. So, alright, that should be good. There we go. So that's on. So we're going to put our milk in. Okay, now it's starting to sink a little bit. Instead of those hooks having to hold it all the way up, I just watched it sink. So you see that? How, how now, the, now the hooks are kind of wobbly instead of holding it down. So fill pasteurizer with water using the already fixed inlet hose until the water is coming out of the outlet hose. So we need to add more water. My kitchen is clean, but not as clean as I would like it to be for this process. So, I put that outlet hose in a bottle to keep it from coming in too much contact with the sink. I don't know why it has a max line on it on the, on the inside of the pot if you're actually supposed to fill it up until the water comes out here because that's a lot more water. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we just had water. We just had water come out of the outlet hose. Okay, once again, before turning it on, there has to be water in the, in the outside part. Temperature parameter represents the temperature of the secondary water or the heating water, not the milk. Okay, so the reason why they sent us the thermometer is because we're going to be measuring the milk on the inside separately. We have to do that manually. We have to test our milk on the inside manually because what this is testing is the heating water, which means that the milk is going to be a lower temperature 
than what this says as the heating water. When process is done, control unit beeps 10 times, pasteurizer turns off, and your milk is pasteurized. Okay, and if it rises over 100 degrees Celsius, the whole system just shuts down. Cooling procedure. Slowly open the valve on your water network or cooling tank, cooling tank that you connected inlet hose to. Cool water will slowly come into the pasteurizer and through outlet hose to the drain. Okay, and then I'm going to put it in my little hole down into my milk. Setting is at 85 degrees Celsius. There it is, it's going down. So we have it here. I just set it. Holding time. So I just set the temperature, so now we're at the holding time setting. You entered the setup menu of holding time, so one, two. Holding time is expressed in minutes, so I'm going to turn it up to 25 minutes. Adjusted value starts to blink on the screen. To apply the value, press the red button once, and then it'll come back to the three empty dot. Okay, so that's a little embarrassing. I'd been sitting there waiting for it to turn on or show any signs of heating up. There was no sign of it heating up. And then I, I figured out that I have to push the blue button. This one, the red one, puts all your settings in for your temperature and your time. But if you never push the blue button, it never actually turns it on. So I okay, so it did finally come up to heat. It, did t it had a little learning curve for me just because I didn't realize how um, insulative that water is and how long it takes for it to heat up and thus it takes even longer for the milk to heat up. But it is at 170 degrees Fahrenheit now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run some cold water through so that it'll come down to about 97 so that I can put my yogurt start in. So it's going to be cold water, cold water that I'm putting in. The water coming out out of the outlet is warm, very, very warm, not like boiling, scalding, but um, it would be something very, very comfortable to take a bath in. actually cooling down very fast. This part back here was much too hot for me to touch before and now it's pretty good. If what you were doing was pasteurizing this and then putting in the fridge, you would want to keep that cold water running until the milk is chilled because you don't want it to um, develop a culture or develop a flavor of any kind. You just want to cool it off as quickly as possible and get it in the fridge. I, however, am going to be making yogurt. I don't pasteurize my milk, we drink our milk raw, but it is important to have your milk at the right temperatures for cheese and yogurt. So I'm gonna let this come down to blood temperature. The water in the outside is already at blood temperature, so now the milk needs to cool down a little bit so that I can just put my culture in, and then I'm gonna restart it so that it's at about 97 degrees, and let that go for eight hours, and it should make me yogurt just fine. And the best part is I don't have to get in again. I can just see from the thermometer on the top when it reaches temperature. And I set it at 38 degrees, which is about 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And for just under 900 minutes. So it's been going all night. It smells like yogurt. You can see that there. Shows it solidified. So, this is the next morning. 
It made really nice yogurt. It was a no-brainer. It wasn't so loud last night that we couldn't sleep through it if it was indicating something to us. And it's really instant about changing that temperature if it drops below the set, um, the setting that you have it on. So I'm really happy about it. It made great yogurt, which is a really simple way to test things like that, rather than going for a hard cheese or a soft cheese or something else where you um, have additives that you're putting in that are very temperature sensitive over the course of several hours. That's how you make a hard cheese. With yogurt, all you're adding is a little bit of yogurt to your warm milk. You stir it in and then you let it sit for eight hours. and dismantle this a little bit. I've got milk, cheese, yogurt stuff here. So there's all sorts of little holes and stuff that you need to make sure you get clean, make sure you get them sterilized for next time. Okay, I'm gonna take this out so that I can move this away. None of this is dirty, all the milk is in here and I don't wanna to have to wash two containers so I'm gonna take my milk container out. Because this didn't come in contact with any milk products, and I'm going to tighten that back down so that I'm not losing my clamp. And I'm just going to put this somewhere to drain till the next time. These both came in contact with milk, so they both need to be washed. Try to remember that there's multiple holes in this. This one, I forgot that it was there. So it's a good reason to mop your floor. Um, any of that water that's in there should be potable. So if you wanna save it, it is a significant amount of water that you use in this. Um, maybe, you know, 10 gallons of water. You can save it for your garden. And I'm gonna look at my instructions really carefully to see if I should let this drip dry or if I need to dry it with a cloth. Before cleaning, make sure that the pasteurizer is switched off and dis disconnected from the power supply. Before cleaning, make sure the pasteurizer has cooled down. The milk pot and cover should be cleaned with hot water, adding fat soluble detergents. Afterwards, these parts could be rinsed with pure water. The pasteurizer shall be cleaned only with a wet cloth and afterwards dried with dry cloth. Do not use abrasive materials to avoid scratches. This doesn't come in contact with your food, so this part does not need to be sterilized. I would highly recommend with any of these tools not to have young children playing with them or using them in any way because um, for one thing they can have steam, they can have a lot of heat associated with them and for another the cleaner you keep things the more reliable your product is going to be in the end. So. I, I highly doubt that my kids would be able to put this away without getting milk everywhere. And if you don't get milk on it, you don't have to clean it. Okay, so I've got about two gallons of yogurt in here. Um, it, it took about two gallons for it to hold the pot down on top of the water, which is why they had those little latches on top so that if you weren't making that much, you didn't have your inside container floating on top of the water on the inside. But I wanted to just see how much I needed to put in in order to have it weight itself down. So I have a lot more yogurt than I would ordinarily have on hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in glass kombucha bottles and put lids on, put it in the fridge so the kids can just grab it out as a treat or as a pre-measured amount of yogurt for breakfast in the morning. For these types of jars, you just need a little funnel One thing you'll notice over the course of the night is that your yogurt will separate. You'll have some clear liquid, which is whey, and then some more solids that are white, and that's your yogurt. I like to mix it all back in together, um, and that, that's just how I like to do it, but it's all edible. Get a bowl. 
Um, I got one right here. Do you want huckleberry or do you want maple? Uh, how about we just put a little honey in it? So you can see I've got a funnel with a hole in the bottom and this is thick enough that it doesn't want to go through. I did not use a special start for that. I just used, um, I think it's called High Mountain Yogurt that doesn't have any additives in it. One thing I would like to mention is that when ordering from this company, they are in, I believe, Eastern Europe. And so when you make your order, please request English instructions. Uh, even though I'm familiar with cream separators, when I got it in, I did not have English instructions. And I tested it to see if certain parts of it could go in the dishwasher. And it didn't destroy them, but it did make them a little off-colored. And so I had them send me the parts that I needed so that they would stay pretty and shiny. But just make sure when you're ordering from them, ask for English instructions.